The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Garcia last name? No, I'm actually Spanish. My dad is Spanish, but I didn't really like grow up with my dad much, so I have like no Spanish influence in my life. Oh. And so the Garcia is just the front. You better watch it because Trump will be the you be the first one he'll come after. <laughs> they see that Garcia last name really is like him. get him. He's not supposed to be here. I don't care how good looking he is. Take him back to whatever godforsaken land he's from. <laughs> Oh, so he's Span yeah, your father's Spaniard. Oh, that's the that's that's the um yeah, that's that's the true definition of Spanish, bro. Arrogance. Yeah, no I'm wonder like, no wonder people it fits call for me you. like Oh, what was that? I said arrogance, no wonder it fits for your persona in wrestling. <laughs> people call me like spicy white. I'm not like they say I'm not <laughs> I even, like, like real Hispanic. <laughs> they call me spicy white. Yeah. Sp- spicy white, I like that. I am more of like a a mayo white. But it's all right. We uh, <laughs> what was it that we, we have a um we have a drink. It's called Mori Soñando. It's like milk and orange juice. Ugh. That's exactly what Daniel is. That sounds terrible. Yeesh. It's actually pretty delicious. If it's, if it's cold, it's actually really good. Milk, orange juice. Yeah. Okay. So, so Daniel, was um was it tough growing up being Spanish and white at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's from well, Daniel. You're from no, Buffalo. I... You're from Buffalo, right? Yeah, I'm from Buffalo. Oh Buffalo. shit! Damn. Wow. Uh, yeah, it must have been tough up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it, it, it was kind of like honestly, it was like a little weird kind of growing up like white, but like also Spanish. It was like you're kind of like not Hispanic enough for like the, the Hispanic kids, but then like white kids kind of make fun of you because your last name. So it was kind of like a weird middle ground, you know. Did you did you did you automatically get picked to play games like baseball? Because you know all Spanish kids are supposed to play baseball and shit like that. <laughs> No, I, I didn't play baseball for one year though in eighth grade. I didn't get any hits or anything. Right. But like I was pretty good. I was pretty good at the field, you know. Oh, it sounds like Oski. Oski's the same way. He, uh, he yeah, my batting average is below two hundred, but yeah. I could throw a ball to first base like no one else. Exactly. Like the min- you're yeah, under the Mendoza line. <laughs> Listen, defense matters, my man. Um, but Daniel, uh, you're from. Um, I'm looking online. It says you're from the section of the city of good neighbors of South Buffalo. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's, it's, Can you inform us on what the hell that's supposed to mean? If it's anywhere near, <laughs> if it's anywhere near Syracuse, there's no good neighbors up there. None. <laughs> hey, nah, the the city of good neighbors is just like a nickname for all of Buffalo, like the city of Buffalo. It's just like one of our nicknames, you know. It can uh, it can be kind of accurate. Like Buffalo people like to like help their own, you know, sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, These are sometimes kind of over here, you know. You know who would, who would like him, Rondo. Rondo loves Rondo Buffalo. loves Buffalo. Yeah, Rondo uh, are you a him. Buffalo Bills fan from football, or? Oh uh, yeah, I'm a the Bills. Yeah, we have we have we have we have a guy over here named uh, Rondo. He he's obsessed with the Bills. Uh, they're actually looking pretty good themselves. But, they're, uh, they're the little team that could. The little team that could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. Oh, maybe the little team that couldn't. Uh, uh, but um, Garcia, you know, living on uh, living in in Buffalo, um, raised with the you know being Spanish and white, uh, was it always wrestling? Uh, was there a different sport uh, besides wrestling that you got into as a kid? Or Please besides- say handball. Please say handball. <laughs> no, uh, I, grew up playing, uh, I grew up playing hockey, actually. Like, that's, like, our big sport here in Buffalo. Like, oh. everyone plays hockey here. Um, so I spent my whole life playing that. I was always a wrestling fan. Like, it was always something I loved to watch. It was kind of like an escape for me, I guess. And then uh, – like as I grew older and started going to like more independent shows and paying more attention to independent wrestling, I kind of realized, huh, this might be like a viable thing that I can actually do with my life. And then I ended up doing it. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see, see the character. I'm trying to see the the wrestler that you are, the look. In hockey, I'm going to say you were a center. Uh, I kind of switched around. I was kind of a utility man. I played some center. Yeah. Up. Well, oh, oh, 
play the wing, like to be on the out, get, get, get on the outs. See if you get the slap shot, get a get a one timer past the goalie on the, yeah. on, the on the right side. I, I I played wing like defense was kind of where I ended up like finding my uh finding my stride and where I kind of ended up excelling actually. Uh, oh, you, you was know, a, you was a goon. I got it. He became a goon. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a goon. Listen, I've always I always wanted to try playing hockey. Uh, uh, you know, I, I used to play um, roller hockey when I was little. Well, street hockey. That's uh, what street I, that's hockey. Play, you know, yeah. um, but uh, Daniel, was was there a time in your life where you were like, you know what, I'm gonna take this hockey thing and 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 actually try to be serious with it, or was it just for fun as a kid? Do you not know the Sabers? I mean, let's be honest here. Of course, I know the Sabers. Do you not but, know the Sabers? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find out if Daniel was yeah, a prospect but, uh, we didn't know about. What are we talking about? Definitely, growing up, like I definitely had dreams of like making it to the league, going to the NHL, like. Uh, I thought I was going to be in the Stanley Cup Finals, MVP, all that kind of stuff. But um, I feel like hockey and, like, probably all major sports are, like, one of those things where uh, you kind of get to an age, maybe around high school, like, where you realize, hey, I'm, I'm probably not – I'm not sc- scouted already, so I'm probably not going to be able to make a living off this one day. And that's what I think is so cool about wrestling. You can, like, start so late and get good at it so quick. I mean, but let's no, be on, let's but, be like, honest here. Who gets more pussy, hockey players or, or wrestlers? Come on, let's be honest here. Hockey players, it's not even close. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! He is right though. Thank goodness I didn't go into wrestling. Shit. Yeah, man, you you missed it. No yet. one likes wrestlers, bro. All the girls <laughs> think I'm weird. What do you think is so unattractive about about being a professional wrestler that the girls don't go? Yeah, uh, I want to fucking I want to fuck with this kid. Why is it? Why? Uh-huh. What's going on, man? I, I expect Daniel Garcia like, to get the ladies. What are we doing here? I mean, I do, I do okay for myself, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like being a being a wrestler isn't like I don't think that's like my selling point with most girls, you know. But I I think re- I think wrestling is kind of like a weird thing for a lot of girls because like one it's fake, so people automatically like assume like, oh like you don't have to be like that skilled or tough or talented to do it, you know. And I think the other part of it is just like you're literally like in your underwear with, like other dudes and i think that can be kind of off-putting to a lot of people listen man daniel i want you to try something next time you go on that speed dating thing i want you to the first thing you say is i'm a fucking professional wrestler and see what they say listen you don't know there's there's an opportunity that some chicks your that some chicks would be like you mean like that thing that had undertaker and goldberg yes that thing and they might attract man you don't know Uh, oh no not even listen hey you're right you're in the ring you know half naked wearing underwear with a with a guy next to you we're doing this podcast across each other half naked in our underwear enjoying time with you so <laughs> there is a difference in what we come across with when we're trying to get the ladies you know yours is a little bit more masculine because at least you're showing your strength and skill um what drew you to wrestling though what, 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 did buffalo have wrestling schools up there what was that where, where do you get that from uh wrestling was like always cool to me like i grew up watching wwe all the time uh I really just loved, like, larger-than-life characters. It was, it was, like, a family thing. I always watched it with my mom and my brother. We would always watch it. And, uh, like, as I kind of got older, I started to, like, look into independent wrestling and realize that Buffalo had some independent wrestling shows, like Empire State Wrestling, which is, like, about a half hour away from here. Oh, okay. And, I didn't uh, know it was, was in like, Albany. I, didn't know I was, was lucky enough to have, like, a mom who would drive me to all these wrestling shows and, like, buy tickets to sit front row with me. And I would see people, like, we would bring in dudes, like, Johnny Gargano, um, Tommaso Ciampa, Anthony Nice, like ESW would bring in like very high level guys. And then I would go to the tables for a meet and greet and I'd be like, oh, these dudes are like smaller than I am. Like, why can't I do this? So then I started looking into a wrestling school in Buffalo, New York, which is uh, called Grapplers Anonymous. That's where I trained. And um, I tried training there when I was like 17 and um, they wouldn't let me. You had to be 18 to train uh, to like, sign the forms and stuff. And then when I turned 18, I just kind of fell out of love with wrestling a little bit. I wasn't really into it anymore. But then um, I was going for a run around this place that I jog in my neighborhood. And I saw, like, one of my trainers. Um, and I said, like, hey, Mikey, what's up? And he was like, oh, hey, like, how you doing? Like, I haven't seen him in a while. And he goes, you still want to be a wrestler? And I, like, felt really pressured. I was like, oh, uh, sure, I guess. And then uh, I ended up going to the gym and started training and I became a pro wrestler. Listen, listen, don't, 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 don't give me, don't, don't be, don't be humble with this, you know, this ladies <laughs> thing. I'm not gonna shy away from that. This is a young man who looks like a uh, Buffalo's version of Channing Tatum. All right, let's let's be wow. honest. Here. Wow. So I know Poon could be thrown at you anyway. I know right now we're very PC because of the whole 
uh, you know, speak out movement or whatever. But, yeah. you know, to be honest, if I look like that, listen, you could you'd be planting flowers in a fucking local park and you could get poon thrown to you. Is it really? <laughs> is, is it? Is it? Is it really? <laughs> let me stop the bullshit. <laughs> no, but um, me and Daniel have something very in common, which I wanted to bring. That up. you both are gorgeous looking men. Uh, mm, it Thank depends you. on who you ask, but um, it depends on who you ask. But no, Daniel, you're 21, correct? Yeah, I'm 21 years old. Well, I'm 20. I'm 22. Young. So uh, then you have nothing in common. Then. That's not true, uh, Daniel. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> we we grew, we grew up around the same time. Uh, what 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 time did you get into wrestling? Because you and me grew up around the same time that we watched maybe the Ruthless Aggression era with John Cena coming up, uh, the Brock Lesnar's, the big shows. Um, do you remember your first memory of watching professional wrestling before you even got into it? Because for me, I'll never forget the first time I ever watched wrestling was when. Brock Lesnar superplexed with Big Show on the top rope, and that shit collapsed. I, fa- I found that wow. randomly on television. Is, is there, a, is there a, a memory that you have that you'll never forget? And also, in those memories, are there any people you look up to um, looking back in those days? God damn, you gave him like a fucking four-tier question, bro. I did. Shit, I did. <laughs> listen. Uh, shit, I had to fucking put my SAT book to answer that shit. What the listen, fuck? Listen, it is what it is. Definitely, uh, my, uh, like, I've been watching wrestling for literally as long as I can remember, like, it was something that my mom and, like, I think my dad always watched, too, like, my dad was a big wrestling fan, my mom was a big wrestling fan, so it was always on, like, my grandparents used to watch it, so, um, but, but I think one of my first, like, this is kind of like a weird memory that I have, it was, uh, I was at my cousin's house, and I think it was, like, one of those Saturday morning or Sunday morning, like, Velocity type shows. Mm, yeah. I remember Eddie Guerrero was on it. I think he was just on, like, Chavo, I want to say. I'm not sure. Probably. But, um, I remember, like, I watched that with my brother. And then we were like, oh, we got to leave my cousin's house and go home and watch this right now. So, like, that's one of my first cognitive memories of, like, watching a wrestling show. And he's, like, one of my biggest inspirations, influences, especially from that time. I love Eddie Guerrero. I like him. How, um... How is it? I mean, I mean, you're not a big, you're not a big dude, you know. You're not really this uh, swole, two hundred and forty pound, six three, six four guy. Like Chris Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, shit. that kind of guy. You're yeah. not, you're not swole like me at a beefy two forty, five eleven. All fat. You know, you're not, you know. <laughs> Wow, you really had to blow me up. The guy doesn't know what the fuck I look like. You really gonna blow me up on that? <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. Because I, I got the svelte wonder across from me. No. Uh, <laughs> how do you How do you know when you start early on with wrestling? What What was gonna be your niche? What What's your gonna be your kind of wrestling style when you start walking into taking your bumps and hitting the ropes? Well, I think for a while when I first started training, is I feel like most people, especially at the age I started, probably are. Like I was like really skinny when I first started. Um. And I think I was really focused on, like, oh, I got to get big. I got to turn to a muscle head. I got to put on 50 pounds and get bloated and stuff. But uh, I think probably, like, about a year, maybe a year and a half into when I started wrestling, I kind of realized, like, hey, like, I don't think that that's really for me. Um, God has always blessed me with, like, a really good gas tank, like, great cardio. And I think that comes from, um, like, playing hockey growing up. Like, I've always been athletic, always – played sports growing up and stuff. So like God bless me with like a really good gas tank, I think. And um I realized the style that I want to do, like I don't really need to be two hundred and fifty pounds for it. I don't really need like huge muscles. Like the style that I enjoy, I just need to be able to wrestle for like thirty minutes and not get tired. I need to be able to um like move in a wrestling ring for ten minutes straight and not even breathe heavy. Like I need I need to get my cardio up. I need to be lean. I need to be athletic almost kind of comparable to, like, say, like, MMA fighters. Like, no MMA fighter besides, like, Alistair Overeem or, like, Brock Lesnar or maybe that, like, Francis Ngannou dude, like, they're jacked up. But, like, everyone else, is, they're just, like, lean, athletic. They look strong, and they're in the best shape that they need to be in for their sport. And I think that's kind of what helped me realize, like, hey, I need to find my niche. I need to be lean. I need to have a great cardio. And uh, I think this is what's going to work for me. Yeah, Olski, Olski uh, basically uh, fanned the flames to you my way because he pretty much, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say he's in his early stages of a man crush, but it's on their way there because he, yeah, he well, likes to say that he has, fuck a, it, why not? Uh, he has a, he likes to see yourself as a little bit strong style. Uh, you work in very technical. Well, he, I, I, I hate to, uh, you know, I don't want to compare anything, but he reminds me, uh, Daniel, remind me of like a Daniel Bryan, Timothy Thatcher 
kind of style. I mean, I, I'm looking online. Appreciate it says that, that Daniel Bryan was definitely one of your um, one of your um, people to look up to. Uh, yeah. What 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 stood? What made Daniel Bryan stand out for you? And how does how how does how does his how does him working in the ring affect the way you do today? Daniel Bryan was always like super cool to me. He, he's someone who like started out like wrestling in front of fire halls, wrestling in front of fifteen people. He's somebody who's shorter than me, who's skinnier than me. Like he's not. He he just looks like an everyday dude you would see walking down the street, and it was kind of uh, like inspiring to see someone like him do things he did, even before the whole like yes movement type thing. Like when he was just cashing his money in the bank, even prior to that, when he was in the Ring of Honor. Like I see this basic, average, everyday dude just taking the world by storm, and he's doing it because he's the best at what he does. And it doesn't matter what he looks like, how he talks, if he's tan, if he's muscular, he's undeniable just because how good he is in the ring. And that kind of showed me, like, no matter how you look or no matter, like, who you are, if you're good enough at something, there's no way people can deny you and there's no way people can turn you down. Absolutely. And that's a good point to make because, uh, you know, after being a wrestling fan for so long, and seeing different gimmicks come come in and out, different um, different different characters, because you know at the end of the, the day, the goal is to get over. And uh, sometimes the gimmick gets them over. Sometimes the, the in ring work gets them over. Guys like Daniel Bryan, Thatcher, the the people in the in the business who get over by purely their skill in that ring and uh, nothing else. Like like you said, Daniel Bryan was not. He was not the he didn't have the the most amazing gimmick where uh, he had the flair and the fucking and all that stuff. He just wrestled, and that mm-hmm. nowadays it, it goes over for me big time because it's hard it's hard to find that gem where you could just go into a ring, know nothing about him, watch him wrestle for thirty minutes, and at the end of the day put on a five star match. Yeah, but you still got to deal with certain things. You work for different promotions here and there, right? So what is like the most goofiest like gimmick that a promoter wanted to give you? Anybody uh, want to anybody want to uh, dress you like I in a chicken suit or some shit like that? Daniel Garcia as the McDonald's employee. <laughs> Daniel Garcia, the empanada man. You throw empanadas <laughs> to the crowd. Your gimmick was the blockbuster guy, wasn't it? You had you had to hand out VHS tapes. <laughs> no, uh, luckily I've I've been pretty blessed to been able to kind of have pretty much creative control over the things that I do. Um, and part of that is because I'm not really willing to, like, sacrifice my creative control for anybody. Like, if I went to a show and they told me, hey, we need you to, like you said, like, dress in a chicken suit tonight, I'd be like, no, uh, I'm just going to go home and also give me my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or I'm going to put you in a fucking Kimura. How about this? How about I throw the chicken suit into a bonfire, burn it, I get my cash, then I head home. I mean, how about we do that? That will be a good segment. No, but you, exactly. you, bring, up, you bring up guys because uh, you know, your style could also be looked to as the MMA kind of style uh, was that a, another inf- early influence as well because me when i was told about ufc and mma years ago i was like it's kind of fruity i mean come on then i thought about it, i said wait a minute i watch wrestling it's kind of fruity so i mean <laughs> 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 no but then I, I, had, I had gotten a real draw and appeal to it very quickly was um mma and ufc like that kind of draw for you as well yeah i, I love mixed martial arts I, I probably like watching mma more than i like watching pro wrestling to be honest uh, have you ever tried? Like, I, have you ever wanted to be in, go into MMA or UFC uh, because of that love, or uh, it was always a distant uh, some, fan thing? It's definitely something that's like crossed my mind vaguely. Like, oh, like this is something that I love. Maybe I want to try it. But then, like, I quickly remind myself, hey, I really don't want to be punched in the face for real. Like, right. I'm cool doing it fake. You know? <laughs> I'm cool doing it, uh, doing a gimmick, but shoot, nah, 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 that's just too much. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm good pretending. But listen, Daniel, there's always an opportunity out there. I mean, uh, it's, it's clear that it's. Are a, you crazy? He's gorgeous. Leave that face alone. Uh, absolutely, listen, <laughs> I, I get that, but uh, you know, like I said, there's, 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 there has been history of pro wrestlers um, eventually doing the transition over to UFC, MMA. So I mean, yeah, that's when their careers are like fucking at a plateau. It's like, look, I'm done with this bullshit. Uh, well, I'm not talking about B- Batista or uh, fucking like those old, uh, those old, old, old yeah. facts. Uh, there's an opportunity for there, uh, but uh, clearly UFC and MMA is a big, a big part of uh, what you do in the ring. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, what, 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 what's like? You've been in the business for how long? It's about you, about three, four years, right? So, uh, and you're already hitting strides that a lot of guys would dream to have, honestly. Uh, 
your first booking, what was it? Right out, right out of, uh, out of school. I mean, did we do it for a hot dog and a handshake? What was it that we did? Uh, my my first booking was it was like five minutes from my house, South Buffalo, New York, uh, like Lackawanna area. It was um I was actually kind of like a replacement for somebody. My trainer was wrestling somebody on the show, and but he didn't end up on to wrestle because I guess the dude was like unsafe or whatever. And he was like, oh, I'll just wrestle my training instead. And the uh, promoter said, yeah. And then I just ended up wrestling him. I was probably like a month in training at the time, definitely not ready for a match, but still probably safer than the dude who's been wrestling for however many years. <laughs> so uh, I wrestled him, and then uh, like I had a couple more bookings at that place. And then very quickly, I started to like build up momentum and gain some traction in wrestling to where I was able to kind of outgrow that place because it wasn't a very good promotion, still isn't a very good promotion. And, um, yeah, I mean, that was, was my, one, that's the story. But is it one of those things that you're, kind of on accident. was it one of those things that your trainers knew, like, this kid got something? I mean, really, look, look at him. He's spry. He can take a bump. It's like Vince when he's talking to Braun Strowman. Right? No, I'm actually trying to get, like, one of those creepy, <laughs> I'm trying to be, like, one of those creepy promoters that have, like, the, the tweed suit. Herb Williams? And, like, one of those kind of guys. That's high on coke. It's like, yeah, he got something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put him in the next match. <laughs> in the next match. <laughs> no, but it, would, would it become a no. thing to, like, like your, your stardom or – I wouldn't even say stardom because you're still – you know, you're always learning. But that you felt like things were moving very quickly for you? Yeah, it was, it was definitely kind of like that. I think my trainers uh, kind of saw something in me pretty early on. Like, I was picking up on things really well. And I think part of that is I was just such a big wrestling fan. I've been watching it for years and years and years. And uh, I think that's good training for your mind. So when I was finally able to uh, be in a ring and I, I, was, I was at the training center like every single day, like just putting in work, like I would spend, I would go there every night for like three, four hours, like alone, just me and the trainers. Like, so I would just get so much attention and so much uh, information and knowledge every single day, you know, um, I, I think that's definitely how I was able to like fast track my place in wrestling. We'll go back. We'll go back for a little bit because I want to go back to the, your, your upbringing in Buffalo. I'm trying to see if I've ever seen a uh, a Ganglam episode that dealt with the mean streets of Buffalo. I don't. I don't remember that ever happening. <laughs> but, um, There's gotta be some sort but, of story um, there. I mean, come on. You, you, you like you said, you had a, you had the the mix culture. You know, a little Spanish, a little yeah. a little white here. What were, were were they bullying or any kind of things going involved going up there? Uh, uh, yeah, like, I used to get called, like, a spick all the time. I used to get called a Mexican when I'm not even Mexican. <laughs> so, wow, they're throwing jabs at you. Know? I can jab. laugh because I'm a spick myself. I can laugh. Yeah. They're, Yo, they're like, like, throwing Hispanic, jabs for no Hispanic, reason. Hispanic, like, Latin people, like, if, if you're Puerto Rican or if you're Spanish or if you're Dominican or something, people take the most offense to it when you call them a Mexican. <laughs> like, <laughs> people hate, like, Hispanics and Latin people hate when they're called a Mexican when they're not a Mexican. That's like so mean to most people. No, my mine is I, I, I hate to be called um um uh, senora because I'm not a I'm not a woman. Everyone calls me Polish because of my last name, but I'm not. Yeah. I'm not Polish. Don't, don't call them madam because I'm a sir. Even though I can, <laughs> no, I, I get it because. My my appearance, my, I'm I'm Puerto Rican 100, percent but if you would look at me, people would be like, "What the fuck is this guy?" Like you know, Albanian kind of look. Yeah, I got fuck, I'm, I'm high yellow black. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck it is, but I know I know that Buffalo could be one of because I know people who went to school up in um, uh, uh, University of Buffalo, and they're like, "Yo, don't get it twisted. It could get popping up there any moment. Like it, it could get it could be yeah, lit man. up there." Um, there's a hood yeah. everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Just, yeah, I, there's a hood everywhere. There's just, a hood everywhere. I just graduated from uh, Buffalo State College. I just graduated in May. Well, I'm sorry. And, uh, I'm like, sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, congratulations, sir. Congratulations. I just graduated myself. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. I appreciate that, too. Yes, but, sir. like, every, mo- every month we get an email, like, armed robbery on campus. Right. Armed robbery on campus. <laughs> kidnapping on campus. So basically, <laughs> like, so, basically, what you're saying is you need a... Um, you, what, what's the app called um, that, that we get? The, uh, um, the Citizens app for the Buffalo. The Citizens app for Buffalo. <laughs> so we need a Buffalo separate Citizens app because uh, it sounds like an armed robbery. Armed no, let robbery. me tell you. Um, Syracuse is about how far from <laughs> Buffalo? Maybe an hour and a half, two hours, something like that? Yeah, it's about two and a half, three. Two and a half, right? 
So I, I remember seeing this girl. I was seeing a girl in Syracuse. She went to U, um, um, University of Syracuse, and um, well, at Syracuse University. And um, there's a strip. If you've ever been to Syracuse, there's a strip called Salinas. Yep. Salinas is maybe about, I, I won't even say a mile long, probably less than that. And it's the most hood shit that I've ever seen. And I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the project. Mm -hmm. And it's the most hood shit ever. <laughs> I was like, thank God I didn't stop here. I was like, what the fuck is over here? But um, now, that, now, now, now that you're hitting the road, you're, you're um, hitting the territories, you're hitting the other um, promotions and stuff. What's been the most uh, exciting promotion that you've uh, – not even exciting, the, the most – yeah, I can say exciting. most exciting promotion that you've been to so far that you was like, shit, I can't believe I'm out here. Probably for me, the one that was the biggest deal to me was probably Evolve when I did a couple shows for Evolve. Uh, they're now sold to the WWE, so I don't think that would be happening anymore. But uh, – like uh, the couple times I wrestled for Evolve, that was definitely a pretty cool experience. And I feel like Evolve was kind of like, because I'm a little bit younger, Evolve was kind of like my ring of honor. Like it was dope yeah. when like Tim okay, Thatcher, yeah. Drew Gulak, and then were there, Chris Dickinson. Like Evolve really had like a hot streak where I thought they were like the best wrestling promotion in the world. Yep. So like watching that in my teenage years and then ending up being able to wrestle for them even though it wasn't really the same as it was when I was watching it, it was still a pretty cool feeling. Did, yeah. Gabe, did Gabe give you the call himself? Yeah, yeah, he did. Wow, that's, that's a, awesome. That's good, man. Shit. Gabe called me I once, too. I think was... Gabe called me, too, but it was because it was the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what ended up happening with that was um, I started wrestling for uh, Beyond Wrestling, which is pretty big, like, independent wrestling company. Yeah, they're really and, um, big. I was doing it. I was doing their uh, Discovery Gauntlet, and it was uh, me versus uh, Kevin Blackwood, who's a good friend of mine, really good wrestler. And, uh, like, we tore it up. We had a great match. And, like, that night, Gabe uh, messaged me on Twitter. <laughs> and then uh, we ended up talking and then ended up working out some details for a show. Speaking of that, you and, um, you and Kevin were in a bad car accident, weren't you guys? Yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah, I, um, I, it's funny because um, Oski br brought me your name, and I was like, damn, the name sounds familiar. And I remember a lot of the indie guys from around here uh, who, who you, you've met up with, if you, you, you know personally, were doing GoFundMe for you guys. Uh, good to see that you guys were able to bounce back. Huh? Thank goodness. Yeah, what the, shit, that, that goes to show you the ringers of the road, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. It was, uh, it was definitely like a – terrible car accident i broke both my legs kevin broke his leg and uh it was pretty unfortunate but i'm really blessed to be able to be alive first of all but then to be able to walk again be able to wrestle again and kind of go back to life with no real uh repercussions of the accident it's i'm very blessed and very fortunate for that now the big question was although your legs were broken did your dick still work <laughs> Uh, I did, I, I, I'm not saying because I'm interested in your dick. I just want to know because just in case Get the machine still work. Yeah. Just, you know, just in case, God forbid, something happens to me and my my legs break, you know, would my dick still work? Yeah, it would still work. Oh, okay, I, I, got right. some, I got some cool hospital stories I could tell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be a dick to where it's like, you know, my legs are broken. Ah, ah, does my dick still work? Oh, good. At least my dick still works. Well, now the listeners know. Yeah, my now, dick still works. The listeners know. So it'll still work. Yeah. Uh, but Daniel, uh, I've always wanted to. Uh, I always wanted to know this. Where did Red Death come from? Because you know th that's the name, Red Death, Daniel Garcia. Is that a? Is that a? Is that a story, or is that just came out of nowhere? It's a nickname that uh, actually his name's Andy Williams. He's the butcher on AEW. He came up with it for me. Uh, I kind of got I got like new red trunks at the time, and this was when I was kind of still starting out. I was like very skinny, very pale, um, didn't really look much like a wrestler. And he kind of thought it would be um, kind of ironic, like how Daniel Bryan kind of had American Dragon, like this overly aggressive nickname. Then Daniel Bryan, this average-looking dude, comes out, and it was kind of like a good juxtaposition for me, like Red Death. Ooh, that's kind of an intense, scary name. And then just like this super normal looking teenager comes out to wrestle. Um, <laughs> and he came up with that for me. Here comes Red it's, Death. And, exactly, and, and Daniel exactly. Garcia come, and Daniel comes out. Like, I'm thinking oh. Kane will come out or some shit. Uh, <laughs> but it's Daniel Garcia. I mean, fuck it. 
yeah, it, it definitely works for me better now that I'm like in I'm in good shape now and I'm a little more work a style that complements that nickname a little bit more. But if I'm being honest with you, the nickname, like, it's not my favorite, to be honest. I kind of tried to ditch it after the accident, but it was uh, not to toot my own horn, but it was a little too over to try to get rid of, so it'll be sticking around. No, I, I, no I've, heard, I've, I've heard of that, that's what, that's what I Listen, I, I've, I've, known your, I've known for your work for a few years, but every single time I've watched a match with a few of my friends on, uh, whether it's we're watching tape from IWTV or whatever it's from, I always got, I always remember Red Death. Well, not only that, I think yeah. that I would have piggybacked on after the accident. I would have been like, shit, fuck that. I fucking beat death. No, I beat Red Death. I would have fucking, I would have, I would have, I would have <laughs> put that nowhere. shit over. Hell yeah, shit, fuck that. Uh, Daniel, uh, speaking of other talent, uh, you, you worked closely with Pepper Parks, which is actually now known as the Blade from Butcher and the Blade in AEW. Uh, yeah, he's from your neck of the woods, right? Yeah, he's from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, cool. What kind of influence he's, he's, did he do like on your a, work? He's from like a suburb in Buffalo, but like. Ah, uh, I get it. Stuff. You're okay. I get it. He's from the pussy part. I get it. I, shh. <laughs> we, won't, we won't tell <laughs> we'll him. We'll keep worry that between us. Shh. He's from the pussy area. Got it. But what what kind of influence did uh did Pepper Parks uh, do to your career? Did, was was he more of a friend or a coach? What what kind of influence was he? both uh he, he definitely started out as more of a coach he uh came to the training school like once a week and he, he kind of did, like more of an advanced class for people where he would kind of teach people um a little bit more of becoming more of professional as a professional wrestler he kind of put a good polish on guys and um but as the years went on and we started traveling together and um he just became like a great friend of mine like pepper is a very good friend of mine like i go over his house he comes over to my house. Watch the Super out. Bowl, like, you know, we, WrestleMania parties. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, like, we text. Like, I spent 4th of July at his parents' house one year. Like, we're we're very good friends. Absolutely. Any, anyone else? By the way, no, wait, wait, before that, before, listen. Um, I get it. He's from, you know, the suburbs. And with a name like Peppa, Peppa Parks, yeah, I smell pussy all up and down. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll keep that between us. <laughs> Eddie? Anybody else were 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 you coming uh, you coming up with any other influence you had around you guys? Yeah, this uh this dude named Brandon Thurston. He's uh he's a Buffalo guy. He wrestled for Beyond a couple times. He um he's starting to get his name out there a little bit more. He, he was someone I watched when I was going to independent wrestling shows growing up, and then someone who was my trainer. And um so he definitely had a lot of influence on me. And then of course like my really close friends in Buffalo wrestling, it's like Kevin Bennett. Kevin Blackwood, Puff, that's kind of like the crew that I travel with and the crew I get booked all on shows with, and they're definitely like the closest people to me in Buffalo wrestling. So uh, let's 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 fast forward a little bit. You know, you're you're, you're rocking the independent scene, and all of a sudden, two hundred five live comes knocking at your door, and you get a quick match with my man Drew Gulak. Wow, that's actually that that's a um, quick match. Uh, but fuck that is on two hundred five live. The fact is that you're there with Gulak. Thank you. Um, can you tell the story was, uh, about how that happened? Like, who who gave you the call? How how, how, how did it work? Because, I'm, I'm, I'm my friend. You know Isaac, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Isaac were we were watching uh, a few a few shows last night, and all of a sudden we put on your match with Drew Gulak. Like I said, quick, but what what a, what an amazing moment in, for a career at only 21 years old. How humbling was that? Uh, that was definitely like one of the coolest things I feel like I've ever done. Um, Drew Gulak was someone who was, like, always inspiring to me. Like, he was like, this amazing technical wrestler, like, was chilling on the independence. But he kind of got signed, like, right as I started wrestling. So I figured, like, uh, my my uh, dreams and aspirations of wrestling him probably won't come to fruition anytime soon or ever unless I get signed to the WWE. Never say never, then, bro. Uh, when, yeah, exactly. Lo and behold, um, I ended up wrestling him on 205 Live, although it was like a insanely short and painful match for myself. Painful? Uh, what what it, happened? He put, it, you, it in the, he put you in the dick twist? What, what, what happened? No dick twist! Jeez. Nah, man. He like, it, the match was literally, he clotheslined me, he hit me with the bag drop driver, and then put me in like a dragon sleeper, and everything hurt so bad. Like right off rip came through, hit me with a clothesline, bam. Like, I was rocked. Picked me up. 
five oh two plugged me right on my dome piece. Oh. And then put me in a dragon sleeper and almost ripped my head off my shoulders. Uh, but it was worth it. it was, <laughs> listen, of course, uh, the, the grind is real and all, but that is a moment you could always say you'll always have, regardless of where you go in your future. I mean, you're only 21, like I said, so the the, the horizon is out there. But to always to say at 21, by 21, you even going to 205 Live with Drew Gulak. Like I said, uh, when I see your work, you remind me of Daniel Bryan, Gulak, Timothy Thatcher. Uh, that must have been one of the most amazing moments p- possible. I was blown away when I saw that, and I was actually really happy to see that because I, I we've been watching independent wrestling for quite a while now, and I'll tell you, you're one of the you're one of the talents that definitely stand out as as up and coming and and the future, man. That's no that's no bullshit. My whole thought about it was that this this occurred, and you know, right now you're talking about how you you know you you got beat up and banged, which is part of the business. But I always have in the back of my mind that. He went to the back and instead of being like, "Hey, great match, Rook is a good night," that he just grabbed him by the by he grabbed Daniel by the head and noogied him and said, "Shut up, pussy, and take the bump." And just like, <laughs> 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 that, that's my dream of what it was like. Ah, shut up, you're queer. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> take the bump, damn it. So uh, let's let's peel back the layers of Daniel Garcia before we let you go because we don't want to leave you on the on the phone for too long. Let's peel back the layers of Daniel Garcia. What are you looking for? In a no. <laughs> what do you what, besides wrestling? What do you do? Are you 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 like everybody else? Are you a video game guy? You into the the the, uh, the the video games? You like picking up the joysticks? Yeah, honestly, I wasn't a huge video game guy up until quarantine. Like, uh, I, I like to play like two K with my friends. Like, but I just kind of started playing by myself during quarantine. I started building a league. Oh, know? dude! So, please I, tell I, me you do. Do you do fantasy draft? Oh, uh, no, I, I didn't. Oh, I didn't my God. Draft. The best way to play 2K is to do a fantasy draft making your own league. It's and, and fucking add, and reset the whole league. Reset the league, do your own fantasy draft. And you can add a team. Like, you can make your own team and your own Oh, my God. I you, have can like, make the, you can make the Buffalo, the Buffalo Garcias yeah, the or whatever Buffalo, the fuck it is. The Buffalo Barons Ooh. or whatever the fuck. Yo, I've, I've done, I have it to where, mind you, I'm a 44-year-old man, and I'm over here gushing like I'm, I'm fucking <laughs> 17 years old. Uh, I do, I do, I, I have my expansion teams with a full draft. I have like the Las Vegas team with Giannis is on that fucking squad. I, I there's no other way to play that by yourself. It's fucking awesome. I've been playing the draft, um, league that. way for like a couple of years Oh now. man, it's awesome. It is a lot of fun. Uh, any other games you're playing? I, I feel like you're a Red Dead Redemption 2 kind of guy. <laughs> nah, honestly, like, it, it's really just sports games for me and I really only play them if I'm with my friends, like. It's kind of hard for me to get motivated to, like, finish a video game. I can barely finish a TV series, let alone a video game. So and they're a little too so hard for me. Do you, no, do somebody you... gets you knit. <laughs> That's right. the gig. You're a knit, right? You, you make knit. sweaters you in make Buffalo. Sweaters. You make sweaters in Buffalo. <laughs> Ar- <laughs> Knitting sweaters? Yeah, you make Argyle sweaters. You make sweaters. <laughs> you knit? Uh, I will. No. Uh, do, nah. Do you ever, you ever mark out for yourself when you see people uh, creating a wrestler and it's you? Like, do you ever mark you, out? You, you, have been, you have been created in Fire Pro Wrestling, if you don't know. Yeah, uh, you have. have, yeah. Se- we, have we have oh, seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, so, something like that. Some, like, it's always cool seeing that when people put, it, like, in a lot of attention and detail and creating you, like, getting your gear just right, getting your, like, facial details right. Like, that's always a pretty cool feeling, for sure. You know, it's funny because we had a conversation with Jordan Oliver one time. And he was like, yeah, um, they don't ever get me right, though. <laughs> people don't never <laughs> Come don't on. Know. That, that, that sounds like just like Jordan. Yeah, they don't ever get me right, though. The hair's the, hair's the problem. It always comes down to the hair. Yeah. That's, that's the fuck-up part. Yeah, I know. But, um, Daniel, Sometimes once again, I want to I, I wanna, I wanna thank you for taking your time, man, for doing this, man. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, of course. You, you're you're, you're going to be part of an upcoming show, right? Uh, yeah. I think yeah. I'm like yeah. the closest booking I have is like September. I think that's so. what I'm saying. You have, you I, have, have um, I, I would have figured you, they would have been snagging your ass up like right now with drive through and driving fucking wrestling shit. Nah, man, people aren't giving me the call. You know, I, I, I'm played out. People don't like me. That's no that. Well, that's bullshit. Some bull- well, I'm gonna have to make a call. <laughs> Listen, I'm seeing, but but like, but I am seeing these new companies called like VXS, ICW, and then the, the, you're you know the Northeast uh, independent wrestling scene has always been you know highlighted. Uh, I'm gonna book you. I'm gonna yeah. book you just to watch SummerSlam with us. I'm gonna do Facts. that. Yo, can we do that? <laughs> I'll book shit, you to watch SummerSlam. Man. It's like a buck. I got, I get you for like a buck fifty. You know, bring what? what, what you drink beer? Or, <laughs> you know, you're like Bush. What? Nah, what, what, what y'all I drink up drink, in Buffalo? Don't you don't drink? Uh, I don't drink either. Oh, I know you do the other stuff. 
No, I don't even. I, I don't do nothing, man. But that's supposed to be a bomb sound. That was supposed to be a bomb sound. I barely, even, I, I barely, sound. Sound. I barely even drink caffeine. Uh, that was supposed to be a bomb. Yeah, sound. no, Daniel, you're right. I I don't drink. I haven't had soda in like six years. Uh, caffeine, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, but yeah, he's still big as a house. So I'm it still makes no difference. But I'm still rotund. But it's all. Yeah, it, it is what it is. I, <laughs> I get it. Red red death doesn't mean that you know death. It means your eyes. I get it. I get it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry about it. Oh jeez. <laughs> That is the most um accurate bong noise I've ever heard in my oh, life. Oh, my boat. Uh, uh, no. Uh, wow. I don't even do that, man. <laughs> man, you're a boring guy. You play chess? Like, what the fuck you do? <laughs> He's on his phone no, playing. No, like, like, I actually am boring. Like, I invest in Bitcoin. Like, I'm okay. big on stocks. Like, there you I'm go. Wow. Guy, you know? That's smart. That ain't boring. That's actually fucking smart. That's business smart. Right you're there. actually going to probably die before everybody else because your pressure is going to go up so high from your stock options and shit. That's amazing. That's awesome. Invest in Disney. Invest in Disney. Invest in Disney. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> invest in Disney. Listen, uh, Daniel, as well, like I said earlier, thank you for, for stopping in. We got we to gotta reconnect again. Honestly, we really do. All yeah. Awesome. And, before, yes, and before we let you go, um, we had an interview recently with Calvin Tankman. You know, you know about Calvin, right? For sure, yeah. And um, I told him the same thing. I'm going to tell you. Uh, I, I told you in the DMs, but I want to say it on the show. Um, you know, with the whole thing recently of uh, speaking out in the independent wrestling world, being, you know, not the, not the brightest. Uh, guys like you, Oliver, um, Calvin Tankman, uh, Tony Deppin, the list goes on and on. You guys are the foundation of independent wrestling now. And no, that's not kissing ass. That's being honest because let's just be real here. The past couple of months of the wrestling world has been pretty damp. But I, I want to tell you personally mm. that – if you keep doing what you're doing and you keep growing, the the the, the independent wrestling world will be just uh, will be just fine. And when eventually you leave it and get signed, because the it li- will happen. It will, and that's not like once again, I'm not kissing ass. This is being truthful. Um, you will put you'll leave it in in the right hand. So keep doing what you guys are doing and 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 keep putting on that work. You guys always do every show, man. It's it's appreciated with shows like us and even other shows we know that 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 show love for independent wrestling in the Northeast. Just just know that we're looking out for you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot, and I appreciate everything like you guys do, everything Isaac does, like all all the tigers I would do. Shout out them, like all like the media and content creators of wrestling right now. Like you guys are doing your part too, for sure. Oh, and I I do want to leave you with one question. We do a we do a segment now with uh with our interviews called Would You Rather. I got to do a jingle for that. Would you rather? Would you rather? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> wow. we're gonna drop. That was pretty good. I did that off the fly. We're gonna all do right. a uh, here, here's a Would You Rather. Would you rather do a year in Japan or a three-year contract with NXT? Uh, is there a possibility for me to uh, let the three-year contract in NXT go further? There is a possibility. Like if I knock it out of the park? Will the no, as a matter of fact, no, it? that's it. You only get three years in NXT, and that's it. You're done. Oh, I'll do a year in Japan. I care about my legacy, not about... <laughs> smart, about smart decision. Good one. Here's another one. Would you prefer to have a career as a five a five star wrestler without no championships, or win the big one at WrestleMania? Mm, the part of me wants to say the five star wrestler because, um, like, I really do care about my legacy, but I care about my life and my family more. And winning the big one at WrestleMania, I've seen the type of payouts those would get, and that would set up my family for the rest of our life. So I would take that. That's another smart one. How about this one? Uh, would you rather do a death match or a cinematic match? Death match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Come on, man. You don't want to be in the swamp with Bray Wyatt and Braun? What are we doing? No, nah, I'm kind of over that. Good, good man. <laughs> yeah. Good man. And lastly, black girl or Puerto Rican girl? Which one? Black girl. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Daniel with the win. <laughs> All right, Daniel, thanks again for participating. You're a good sport and big, big, big things for you, man. I see it coming. And also, don't, don't forget us when you get big, man. Turbo Good Tabloid, we're, we're, we're happy that you, you you spent your time with us. And thanks for your time, sir. I appreciate y'all. This is like my favorite interview I've done in a while. Oh, know. man, that's fucking dope, <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, thanks, great. Dude. It's always a great time having you on, man. And, and once again, we have to do a part two. And I'm um, glad. I'm glad. Soon. And I'm glad to know that your dick works after breaking your legs. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, sir. We'll talk later, Daniel. You too. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one.
Turnbuckle Tabloid.